distinguished guests, both active duty and retired military officers, ladies and gentlemen, and active duty and retired soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen. On behalf of Ken and Julia Fall, Boulder Press Retreats, and the EOD Warrior Foundation, I'd like to welcome you all to this dedication ceremony of this statue in honor of all U.S. Navy frogmen, EOD, UDT, SEALs, and the predecessor units to these since World War II. I want to welcome our family and friends. Julia and I are honored for your attendance today, and I'm very happy to do, uh, to do on a daily basis what we do here uh, at Boulder Crest Retreat. Today's guest speaker was trained in the severest of schools, <clears throat> combat, and he will tell his own story of heroism, a story of honor, courage, and commitment, a story of bravery under fire, a story of his deep regard for his faith, his family, and his teammates. His personal biography and his Medal of Honor citation, which should bring chills to you, are provided in your program. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for being here, and please uh, join me in welcoming Senior Chief Petty Officer Ed Byers, uh, our guest speaker for today. He's a husband, a father, a warrior, a hero, a friend, and a U.S. Navy SEAL. Thank you, Steve. This turned out to be a beautiful day. It's really a treat to be out here. I appreciate it, Ken. Now, thank you for that welcoming introduction. Words are unable to express how much it means to me that we still have people and venues in this country that honor values and traditions. Respecting our flag by standing for it, reciting the words and the feelings that invoke the emotion inside of you, respecting God and saying prayers for everything we're blessed for, and asking for his constant intercession and safety. I'm once again humbled for the opportunity to speak at such an event and it's always an honor to be introduced by a fellow warrior. I know it's been a few years since you left the esteem ranks of the EOD community, but looking around, there's no mistake that you once again picked up your sword and shield and charged in the civilian world to lead such a great cause, the care and restoration of our nation's warriors. This is what our nation's about, common men and women with the uncommon desire to better a civilization they live in. That is the core value of the SEAL ethos, a common man with an uncommon desire to succeed. Ken, you are that man. Thank you. I would be amiss not to give my sincere gratitude to so many amazing people here today. First and foremost, to my incredible wife, Madison, and my daughter, Hannah. You're my rock and inspiration. That's good. I love you both more than I love myself. To all the active duty veterans and Gold Star families, it's because of your selfless sacrifice and continued strength in your times of adversity that ignite passion in fellow countrymen to never forget why and how we have what we have. For the police, fire, and civil service here today, your service is inseparable to our nation's success as she tries to find her footing in the wavering times of uncertainty. Thank you for holding the line at home. The most valuable treasure we possess is our time. And because we come from so many various backgrounds, your reasons for being here today will take on different meanings. I believe I'm safe in saying that we're all here today because of our loyalty and patriotism to our country and fellow men. So thank you for sharing your time today as we dedicate this statue and to all those who have gone before us. You know, my family and I arrived late last night, and we drove up through the gate. The lights from our vehicle splashed over a sign with a bunch of arrows pointing in various directions to different destinations. The majority to the facilities within Boulder Crest and the activities that you can do while you're here. And there are a few that pointed to distances far away. 
many in this room that we've been to. There was a sense of pride, solace, and happiness that overcame me as I looked up and around and up at the moon, reminiscing on my time spent overseas, entering battle with my brothers, and knowing that I, that I can come back home and be with my family and hearing the voice of my wife and daughter. So I'd like to take the time today to share what being here means to me. And I believe it means three things. I think it, we are here to show solidarity in honoring those who currently serve our veterans and our fallen, and all the families who made everything possible. It means sacrifice, dedication, and hope, and it means honoring the brotherhood. You see, in solidarity, it provides support and the possibility for a common cause without requiring the relinquishment of different interests. It expands the discussion, the process, and the possibilities. I'm not here to speak about politics. I'm here to talk about possibilities. And I believe that is what Ken and Julia envisioned not too many years ago. What is in the realm of possible? Hopefully my memory and facts don't go right here, Ken. And we heard how Ken served 21 years as a distinguished EOD technician and a master chief, and then become seriously wounded. He could have just retired and found a cushy job and enjoyed the rest of his life. That's not the type of man he is. A truly wise instructor once told me, it's not how much you know, or people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I think Ken and his amazing wife Julia knew this idea when they bought a 100-year-old farmhouse and started out providing meals and short stays for, at their home for wounded warriors. And then, as you heard, just a few short years came to serve thousands of people and not just special operations. All those in critical need to help cope with TBI and PTS from all aspects of the military. It's truly amazing what you can accomplish when you're not worried about who gets the credit. You know, the real story here is about the family. And my family is the reason I can do this job. My reason to keep fighting and to return home safely to win at all costs. My wife and daughter have exhibited the type of strength that can bring a grown man to his knees. You know, that young woman right there, my daughter, that's what it's all about, deployment after deployment, coming home in the middle of the night and watching her run across the parking lot and jump into your arms and run her fingers through your hair. That's the most amazing feeling in the world. Their unwavering commitment and support is at a time too much co to comprehend. It's impossible to explain to my extended family what this means and how inspiring they've been in my life and how they influenced my commitment to this great nation. My NSW family has shown me what a truly collective and focused group of people can do when the odds may be against them. I'm a firm believer that the NSW family is the best type of family anyone could wish for. Our families are the epitome of, if I get knocked down, I will get back up every single time and draw on every single remaining ounce of strength to protect our teammates and accomplish our mission. You have been the key holders for the past 15 years, and your strength is the critical link to our success. You have carried the sorrows and responsibilities of being single parents, the countless nights away from home, and missing out on the most cherished moments a family can experience, birthdays, holidays, first accomplishments. Yet you continue to fight and you continue to draw on your immense strength. If it wasn't for you, we surely would have failed. Everyone in the NSW community though has experienced this. And I really think we became numb to what that really means. This is why it's so important to have places such as this. A place to reflect, cope, and heal from the sacrifices we all have made. Most importantly, the sacrifices of those who gave all. Here this morning, as I watched the sun rise over the Blue Ridge, I wrestled with what to do with numbers, these numbers. So I just want everyone to kind of soak them in. And I want to apologize up front, because the numbers seem to be easy to get, but they're not. 
We've had two, over 290 personnel in NSW killed in action. We've had 96 EOD and SEAL killed since 9-11. These are our warriors that sacrificed everything they had for our nation. How do we adequately express the gratitude for those who gave all? To those who didn't sign up for a job that could give them treasure or fame. Who wanted to represent an ideal. One of living in the land that is free and safe. A place such as this. To be able to reflect on life and give thanks and praise to God and to, and to those that helped them achieve such blessings. Well, we can start right here. We recognize that our communities are one and the same for the better part of 15 years. We have served side by side in training and on the battlefield. We have bled together, overcame insurmountable odds, and carried our fellow warriors out of the arena of battle when they paid the ultimate price with their life. We honor the fact that that price of admission is paid in blood and cashed in the tears we shed when we speak their names. John 15, 13 reminds us there's no greater love than one who lays down their life for our brothers. And John 3, 16 gives us hope that there is one greater who gave his only son for all of us and for our salvation. It's truly remarkable how the butterfly effect can happen and how so many things can be interconnected. Petty Officer First Class Louis Safran was killed in an explosion in 2008. And in that mission, there was also six SEALs that were wounded. There was one man that was left for dead, and he ended up becoming my team leader. After another great EOD senior chief, Craig Vickers, perished with 31 great heroes on Extortion 17. Their service to our country represented the highest ideals of our community, and their loss will never be taken for granted. My personal story revolves around this very concept. Two EOD technicians were personally involved on the night of the 8th of December, 2012. And in one instance, if it wasn't for his courage and utter competence, I probably wouldn't be standing here today. I humbly wear this medal to represent the Brotherhood. I wear this medal for Nick Check. Nick Check was a warrior, a brother, and a friend. His death is inseparable from this. He was an embodiment of the Brotherhood. He embodied what it meant to be a Navy SEAL. He was hard as nails and resilient. He had a never quit, never fail mentality. And along with the rest of the team, carried out some of the most dangerous and difficult missions our nation could have asked of us. Nick, Nick Check paid the ultimate sacrifice doing what he loved on the battlefield because that's what brothers do if they have to. They'll lay down their life. I want to emphasize that I'm no different than any of my teammates, and I am certain that any one of them would have taken the same actions I did that night. I've seen countless heroic acts in my time working with the nation's most elite operators, and I feel a sense of responsibility and recognition that has been bestowed upon me. My brothers who are still fighting, who are still in the shadows, deserve to stare in the spotlight but those men would not expect or seek recognition for their actions. In dedication, we see the Navy uh, EOD disposal teams, and we trace their history back to the first group of volunteers that were selected to work with the British unexploded ordnance teams following the German Blitzkrieg attacks in early 1940. In June 1941, those veterans returned and formed the first class in the Mine Recovery School. Their original intent was to provide safety and opportunity and continuity by eliminating booby traps, weapons caches, and performing mine clearances. Their job has grown to much more than that. They stand side by side, with their SEAL brethren, as counterparts during training and prepping for deployments and being as soldiers in the train when we go on target. Always dedicated to going to the next level. Ken, you and your staff have done the same by going to the next level. And I think we all witness here what you continue to do for our warrior community, recognizing the desolation and frustration of wounded warriors experienced while spending time in inpatient and long-term care units in Washington, D.C. And then going on to establish the EOD 
Warrior Foundation. I can only imagine how many trials and tribulations you experienced. It can test every aspect of your humanity. Wanting to heal those who have made a commitment to protect our nation is beyond commendable. You are perpetuating the legacy of so many by not treating injuries as per permanent disabilities, but by shining a light on how those injuries can be used for good and becoming a contributing member of society. This is what brings so much hope. We see dedication in, in the incredible battle cross monument that has been created. The helmet casts a veil over everything else that we use. Formed from a head of one of our fallen, Sean Carson, and serves as a protector, shielding the items that we need to go into battle. It rests upon our rifle in which we use to defend our freedoms and the fins that provide us a blanket of safety as we move in and out of the water in the middle of the night, a territory few dare to go into. While the mask provides us clarity so we may act in a precise and lethal manner. Lastly, we see the boots which cradle our often tired feet during countless miles on the journey to be part of the best military fighting force our world has ever known. This replica is a symbol of hope. In hope, there is so much immense hope in knowing we have the men out there ready to give everything they have to defend our land, our reputation, and our families, and our way of life. And then they have a place to recoup. These warriors we honor here today carry the greatest responsibility one could carry. Their responsibility is knowing when to take the life of another human being. This charge can only be righteously carried out if you have instilled within you the values of which our ethos is based on. Humility. Everything is governed by humility. And humility is the glue that binds everything together. Humility is what we seek to master. Humility does not equal weakness. On the contrary, it exudes the highest level of strength. It shows you the ability and the power to be strong, but only when it warrants it. The heroes in my life gave me hope and continuously made me humble. My family, my faith, and the brotherhood. Hope in having the strength to properly recognize the attributes that lay hidden from my public life, which became my faith. This has often been a quieter aspect of my life, and it's played, but it's played a significant role. Growing up Catholic, my brother taught me how to turn my heart and soul towards Christ when I strayed off course or become lost, always asking for forgiveness and guidance. Prayer provides calm amidst the chaos. This opportunity to share my faith in the public manner helps me grow, and I'm surprised at how many guys have shared in private how their faith plays a role in their life. I was given a St. Michael Arch Archangel patch back in 2005 on my first deployment to Iraq. And I wore that patch on my, on my kit for every single operation I've ever been a part of. And that prayer starts out with, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, and be our protection. On that day in December 2012, just like any other day, I prayed. And I prayed on my way to Target, and again I prayed over my brother Nick Chet for the repose of his soul as he gave his life to save another American. I hope someone would do that for me one day if that day should come. God has led me where I'm standing today and I'm not sure what his plans are for me and my family. So I ask that you pray for us as I continue to try my, find my path as he walks, as I walk down it. As I humbly try to find my way I always rely on my brotherhood to help keep me in check. The brotherhood is everything to me. My teammates became closer to me than most of my family members. When you live, eat, sleep, and bleed with them year after year, they become a part of you. There's a famous quote within Special Forces that says the job will become your mistress. Now you'll fall in love with her because of the way she makes you feel. Our job is the greatest job in the world and no amount of money can buy you a place at our table. Most of our nation's warriors joined post 9-11. They witnessed our nation come under attack and they made a vow to defend her. They decided to join a community 
that shares the greatest victories and the greatest tragedies our nation has witnessed in battle since those towers collapsed. They signed up full of knowing full well the dangers that may come with the job. And they signed up for a job that's not for the faint of heart, the weak-minded, or for that matter, a Boy Scout. To me, that is the definition of re real courage, and it's humbling to witness. Being in the Brotherhood is to keep company with heroes, with people that put themselves at risk for the benefit of others. I would also say it is keeping company with those that inspire others to become better people. These men always take charge. They never tire and they never quit. And they will always take care of you like family, telling you all the things you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Our brotherhood lost an incredible warrior a little over a month ago. Ryan Owens was the epitome of what a SEAL represented. I had a distinct privilege of serving with Ryan, and I had the honor of helping receive him home at Dover. Ryan's characteristics of always looking out for those around him, bringing a smile to everyone's face, his hard work and absolute dedication to his job, and unrelenting desire to be the best and succeed made him irreplaceable. We tend to lose the very best we have to be reminded of what we represent. Ryan represented the Brotherhood in its truest sense. It was the reason at Arlington a hundred of his brothers pounded their tridents in the top of his coffin. And having been afforded the opportunity to go to the State of the Union, I witnessed once again what he meant to a nation and the praise given by our president to honor his life and his wife, Corinne, with the longest standing ovation they've seen. The Brotherhood will never be forgotten and it will always bring us joy and challenges. So that is my charge to everyone. There will be challenging times in how to relate and interact with our warriors returning to, from overseas. But this is what this place is about, to work through those moments. And I ask our civic leaders here to continue to take the time out of their life to peel back the onion on the fine men and women that come through here and take, them, and take from them the beautiful traits that have been instilled in them from our service to our nation. Leaders eat last but lead from the front, and it's all about selfless service, trust, and competence. Our warriors deserve nothing less than all of our respect. And as the EOD community says, it's either initial success or total failure. And I believe you will not fail. So may God bless and guide each and every one of you. May St. Michael the Archangel defend our warriors in battle and may long live the brotherhood. Thank you. I want to present this to you and just say thanks for coming out today. God bless the USA. All right, thanks. <laughs>